the signs of spring are all around us, even at City Hall. On today's edition of New Day Federal Way, we'll get to hear what's springing up around the city of Federal Way. Hello and welcome, I'm Kathy Arndt. Today on New Day Federal Way, we're here at the Twin Lakes Golf and Country Club to hear Mayor Jim Farrell's 2015 State of the City Address. Mayor Farrell's address was given during the April luncheon of the Greater Federal Way Chamber of Commerce. During the speech, he delivered an update on critical downtown development projects at Town Square Park and the Performing Arts and Conference Center. A highlight of the event was recognition of King County Council Member Pete Von Reichbauer as the 2015 Municipal League Public Official of the Year. Federal Way citizen Sean Deeds, who made national news, was also recognized for his good deed of stopping a little boy from crossing a busy street right here in Federal Way. Let's go inside and hear the 2015 State of the City Address. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of Federal Way is a great mayor because he knows when the chamber says to him, which way do you take for business success, Mr. Mayor? He says, the Federal Way. There you go. Thank you back here for that warm introduction. And I'm a Virgo, not a Capricorn, but uh, it's another issue. I, I, before I get started, I think it's important that we just uh, lay uh, something out and uh, make it abundantly clear that in the immortal words of that great orator, Marshawn Lynch, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> I want to make that abundantly clear. All right. Well, I thank you again, Becca, for that warm introduction. I thought, you know, I know the council has been introduced, but they've been such great policy partners. Can you please all stand? Let's give them a big round of applause for all the work you do. <laughs> I'd also like to thank again our municipal court judges, uh, 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 presiding judge Dave Larson and Rebecca Roberts. And if you could stand again, really appreciate. It. You do such great work there, I really appreciate it. Uh, we've got our management team staff here. Our management team, can you please stand up and be acknowledged for all the hard work you do? Thank you very much. So um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is we've got our inaugural PAC director, Performing Arts and Conference director, all the way from Lancaster, California, Teresa Yvonne. Teresa, can you please? Thank you very much. And we also have Michael Morales on his very first day today. Uh, Michael, we don't do this every Wednesday. Uh, community Development Director. So don't show up here next Wednesday. Um, you know, each year, ladies and gentlemen, the State of the City Address draws a large crowd, many of whom have contributed to our city's success. That depth of interest displayed is a powerful illustration of the strength of passion and commitment and civic engagement in our community. Thank you for joining us today to talk about the direction of our city and our community. I'd like to acknowledge a very special guest with us today. He is the 2015 Municipal League Public Official of the Year, and he's our very own King County Councilman, Pete von Reichbauer. <laughs> I've often heard Pete say that, quote, listening is the beginning of understanding. I believe those words define Pete's service to our community and more than any other. He listens to those he serves and works to help find solutions. That, above all else, deserves recognition. Please join me again in congratulating Pete von Reichbauer on this well-deserved and prestigious honor. <laughs> I'm honored to be giving this address during our city's 25th anniversary. Reaching our silver anniversary is a significant milestone for this young city of ours. While we celebrate the 25th anniversary of our incorporation, let us not forget the deeper history of this community and region, a history that brought together different communities with different views in creating our federal way. How'd that get there? Well, as Mr. Federal Way would say, none of your business. I guess some people will do just about anything these days to get a positive headline in the mirror. In honor of the... All right, mission accomplished. All right, now we can get on. Uh, in honor of the city's uh, silver anniversary, we'll be holding a special celebration on June 20th, that's a Saturday, at Town Square Park. The theme of, of our event is celebrating our past, building our future. 
We have live music and entertainment. At the town center across the street, we'll be hosting a family carnival and uh, with rides and games. And that'll go from the Thursday the 18th all the way to Sunday uh, the 21st. For those who don't want to fight that U.S. Open traffic, we'll have lots of activities in our downtown. We have much to be thankful for as a community. I believe those who work so hard for incorporation would share my statement that the Federal Wave today fulfills many of the qualities residents originally sought in their new city government. One of those qualities is character. And every once in a while, we get to see the heart of our community displayed through remarkable acts. Last week, while driving down uh, Dash Point Road, Mr. Sean Deeds, a good Samaritan, saw a young boy running down a sidewalk toward a busy intersection. Sean, without hesitation, stopped his vehicle and ran to prevent the boy from running directly into crossing traffic. Federal Way Police Officer Chris Martin quickly arrived on the scene and came to the aid of the child, uh, ensuring his safety. With the young boy in safe hands, Sean Deeds drove off and took his son fishing. Sean had no idea that he was a hero that day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> or no idea that our police department would be looking for him to say thank you, or that he's act, frankly became a national hero. This made national news. Uh, thanks to our safe city cameras, we were able to record Sean's good deed, and we were able to find him. Sean is here today, and I'd like to uh, recognize him. If you could stand, let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. We have such a great community. But ladies and gentlemen, for years in our city council chambers, alone on a back wall, there was a very special letter, unnoticed by many and passed by citizens at every meeting, hung a warm gesture to the people of our newly formed city. In it, the author wrote that the, quote, transformation of your community into an independent city will enhance the welfare of your citizens. Indeed, we have enhanced, enhanced the welfare of our citizens. We've built a safe community with a respected police department that seeks to serve all members of our community. We have a thriving park system anchored by a heavily used and well-loved community center. We have high quality streets and infrastructure. We have incorporated because our city saw that city government would be the tool they needed to build the future they want it. Our city has progressed significantly since last year's address. Today, as we celebrate our recent achievements, we also look forward. As, we, as proud as we are of what we have accomplished, uh, tomorrow holds the promise of an even greater pride and excitement. When I look around this room, I see a room full of people who have chosen to come here to Federal Way. We appreciate the quality of life here. It's a wonderful place to raise a family with good schools and great neighbors. It's an outstanding community uh, where to run a business. The tax rates are low. There is no B&O tax rate, and that will stay that way. People choose to live and work here because of what we offer as a community. They come here and stay here because of the quality of our community and because of its potential. As I talk to residents, I hear a constant refrain that they are ready for downtown to finally happen. They want to see a downtown that gives them a reason to stop, get out of their car, and enjoy their city. They want a destination downtown, not a place to drive through as they make their way onto I-5 to go somewhere else. We understand that the downtown must be the engine that drives a robust economy. The success of our downtown is pivotal to creating a dynamic, prosperous city for all of us. In that regard, the city can serve as an agent of change. Starting in 2014 and when the partnership of the city council we've begun building the federal way of the future. Last year, we began laying that groundwork. We began showing people what positive change in the city center really looks like. The city council approved the Performing Arts and Conference Center. We opened Town Square Park and introduced the Town Center Project, 21 acres at the heart of the downtown, connecting the park, the pack, with the hotel, and the potential for private office space. Town Center is also site for higher education facilities, public spaces, and smaller retail spaces, along with uh, uh, entertainment venues. We hope to create an urban village that all can enjoy. In 2014, we set a solid foundation. Now it's time to build. 
Nelson Mandela once, uh, once commented, it always seems impossible until it is done. Consider that a year ago, only four of those 21 acres, the transit center, were developed or acted. Today, we are filling in the vacant and undeveloped properties with a dynamic city center. That investment and change is also evident throughout our downtown. The vacant buildings that used to loom above our park is now gone. Later this fall, work will begin to construct the Performing Arts and Conference Center. Over the next year and a half, we'll be able to watch the future under construction as that building literally begins to rise. When finished, the metal frame facility with its glass curtain exterior and public plaza will offer splendid views of Mount Rainier and our downtown. Perched on a high point, it will become the key landmark for visitors to our downtown. A visible sign that change that we have dreamed of is finally here. The PAC will have a profound effect on our economy. Construction of the PAC and its on-site hotel would generate more than $60 million in construction-related spending in the downtown. Operation of the facility is expected to generate approximately $3.2 million in spending and 29 new jobs. There is another side to the Performing Arts and Conference Center, as we're all aware, that is important to remember. The PAC used to be the poster child for stalemate. It was all talk, no action, in a debate that went on almost 20 years without resolution. A year ago, there were two pitch sides that could not seem to agree, and the scene was ripe for further inaction and divisive disagreement. Today, we're preparing to build the Performing Arts and Commons Center. You know, years from now, I believe, looking back, the pivotal moment in this city's history will, be, will go down as May 8th of 2014. May 8th of 2014. That was the day that the Blue Ribbon Panel gave its 137-page report to a packed city council chambers. It was the first and only time in my 26 years of involvement in politics and public policy that I saw a standing ovation on a public policy issue. But more important, just one month later, that report and the, uh, uh, the uh, work that went into it led to a unanimous vote by the city council to pass the Performing Arts and Performing Arts and Conference Center. It was an important victory to this community to bring objective and financial analysis to the PAC. That, rep that report obviously led to the unanimous, unanimous passage. We all want and need it to succeed, and the intellectual honesty in the Blue Ribbon Panel's work will pay great dividends to our community for years to come. Next year, the PAC will open its doors and proclaim to the region that a new federal way here is here and open for business. At last year's State of the City, I announced the construction of the city's first downtown park. Our vision of this park is to be the beating heart of our community, the lifeblood of our city's core. The Town Square Park is the cross point where our diverse community comes together as one to enjoy outdoor movie nights, holiday tree lightings, and recreation events, such as future Veterans Day event or a concert in the park. Our new park has been so successful that more than 400 residents participated in the process to identify phase two improvements. When developers look at our downtown for potential development, they no longer see a vacant lot symbolizing a downtown going nowhere. They see families enjoying our community's true center. They see a city that believes in its downtown and is finally investing in it. Thousands of people used to drive by this area and witness what the Federal Mirror appropriately called an intersection of blight. The area was littered with weeds and trash and graffiti, uh, covered the vacant buildings and utility boxes. Now when they drive by, they see families enjoying the park as their kids play basketball or chess. And on any given weekend, the rich smell of barbecue fills the air. The work of phase two of our park will begin this summer and will be complete by the following summer, June of 2016. It will include a new spray park, large trees and shade, a great lawn and restrooms as well as the future site of a veteran's monument. Our vision is to see Town Square Park continue to grow as, our down, as a downtown destination for families and visitors alike. The park and the PAC are infusing our downtown with momentum and life. Together, these projects will bring eight of those 21 acres into active use within the next year. Investing in our downtown has created new opportunities. Last November, the city council purchased, the city purchased the seven and a half acre former target site to bring together the vision for the town center. I led this effort because I truly believe that as a city, we had to take this next step. To leave this property in the same or similar condition for the foreseeable future 
while at the same time moving on the park and the pack was simply not an option. We had to take control over our destiny and set the course and tone for decades to come. Just a few weeks ago, we issued the RFQ, the request for qualifications, uh, for that site and asked the private sector to express their interest in our downtown. That process is currently underway right now, and we're looking forward to seeing the kind of growth and investment in our town town that we have longed for, and frankly, that we deserve. The goal of a fully realized and built out downtown has been our dream since our inception 25 years ago. We've been reaching, we've been reaching for it, like Jay Gatsby on the end of that pier, reaching for that green light, never quite able to reach it, seemingly out of reach. We've made this move and took this risk because we had to. I know that there's been concern where are the cost of this purchase. I, more than anyone, have heard these concerns. I knew it would be the case. In the days and weeks leading up to this purchase, I put a considerable amount of thought into this. It took two months to pull this deal together, and a considerable amount of work and deliberation went into it. A few days before the deal was finalized, I went out to Town Square Park and looked up at the site of where TC3, Town Square Park, the target development would be. I asked myself one simple question. What happens if we do nothing? In the end, I reached the conclusion that this was in the best interest of the community for the long term to move forward and capture our destiny. It will literally transform our downtown. You know, when I was preparing for these marks, I, in my office, I've got a plaque uh, that my friend uh, and prosecutor, Dan Satterberg, gave me. And uh, in it were the following words at the very bottom from President Kennedy. There are risks and costs to action, but they are far less than the long-range risks of comfortable inaction. And I could not agree more. In the end, I believe our community will see this is the right path. We still have a lot of work to do, but what we have achieved already is creating the template for change. We've begun to turn around the region's perceptions about our city. And in doing so, we have sown the seeds for the federal way we want to create. Our residents have demonstrated that they are excited about the future, too. As was famously said in the field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. Last year, we held five major new events in the downtown, including the Veterans Day event, the park grand opening. More than 4,500 people, citizens, residents of our community, came out for those events. Now, while uh, town center is changed on a large scale, we are also making many smaller but important changes to improve how people experience Federal Way. You know, they say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And there is no bigger first impression for Federal Way for many people than the entrance to our city on 320th as you get off the freeway. For years, we've had a welcome sign that was underwhelming at best. That changes next week. In approximately a week, we'll be unveiling a new entrance sign at the 320th exit that will proudly welcome all to Federal Way. The sign features high-definition screen with a welcome message and a reader board to tell people about upcoming community events in Federal Way. We are blessed in our community to have so many community service organizations, and we are proud to have partnered with the service organization to present their names and logos on the sign, and they helped uh, uh, defray some of the cost. Once you drive past the welcome sign, your eyes are drawn immediately to the new 60-foot flagpole uh, with the 15 by 20 foot, 25 foot American flag at the intersection of 320th and 99. The giant flag is flanked uh, in good weather, uh, on either side by street flags, and we renamed that street through our downtown honorarily Veterans Way. On Veterans Day, more than 1,100 residents turned out to dedicate this project and show Federal Way's appreciation of our veterans. The council and I were joined by Senator Patty Murray and King County Councilman Pete Ron Reichbauer in hoisting the flag up the flagpole for its maiden flight. The Veterans Flag Project dramatically improves the look of our downtown. I received numerous emails and comments from residents and visitors alike uh, about the inspirational impact of driving into Federal Way and seeing old glory waving in the wind. In fact, actually, even if I don't, I'm not necessarily going that way, I take that way just so I can, I, I can see that flag and the, and the beautiful impact it's had on that, uh, on that uh, uh, part of our town. In fact, actually, uh, if, I, we have, if we have any veterans in the audience, could I have all the veterans who served in uniform please stand up? Thank you very much for your service to our country. We really uh, honor that. We're also improving the view of the city through a project to replace unflattering utility boxes with beautiful art wraps. We installed five wraps last year, and we'll be installing another seven uh, this year. 
The wraps convert ugly utility boxes into works of art that celebrate things we appreciate, such as our veterans, our state's natural beauty, and of course, the Seahawks. <laughs> While these are small scale projects, they're important ways of showing the beauty and heart that is at the core of our community. They will add color and character to our entire community. Please join me in thanking Gary Gillespie and the entire Arts Commission for their work on this project. Gary, thank you. Now, while most of the work that we've been talking about is centered on downtown, the Weyerhaeuser campus is obviously a major priority of my administration. At the Weyerhaeuser campus, my staff and I are working with the company to leverage their eventual departure into the arrival of new jobs to Federal Way. In the past few, years, past few years, we all know that Weyerhaeuser has literally shed thousands of jobs. With all the changes at Weyerhaeuser, the company's departure has been coming for some time. The sale of this one-of-a-kind corporate campus offers a, golden, offers a golden opportunity to entice a large employer or employers to come to Federal Way. We've made it clear to Weyerhaeuser that the city's goal for the property is jobs. And we are working with the company on a weekly basis. Actually, they were in our office this morning uh, working with our staff. And, uh, and we're also working independently to recruit major businesses that would achieve that goal. More broadly, we've reinvented the city's approach to supporting economic growth. As with our downtown, the approach of previous decades has not been results oriented. Last year, I took the Economic Development Department out of the Community Development Department and into the mayor's office and hired Tim Johnson. Tim, could you please stand up and be acknowledged by everybody? Thank you for your work. <laughs> Tim is our new Economic Development Director, and I'm going to stop introducing him as uh, all the way from Sacramento or San Diego. Uh, even though I just did. Uh, earlier this year, I, uh, I published the city's first comprehensive economic development strategy. And let me repeat that. The first time in the 25 year history, 25 year history of this community, we have a written uh, plan. And turning the Weyerhaeuser campus into a source of new jobs is just one of 30 objectives included in our new strategy. The strategy also focuses on business recruitment and retention citywide, facilitating a business access to capital, recruiting a university branch campus. I'd like to thank our council and also Kelly Maloney, council member Kelly Maloney, who's been working on that project. <clears throat> and later this year, we'll be hosting an economic development summit, among others. As part of the effort and an attempt to be more responsive to the needs of our business community now and as we grow, we just held our first business connection meeting with the Federal Way Chamber of Commerce. This important meeting allowed us uh, to brief city center business owners on the exciting developments near their current businesses. I'd like to thank Becca Martin, board chair Lori Santa Maria, and the entire board uh, for the work they do for the chamber and for the community as a whole. Our economic development strategy changes how the city has traditionally pursued economic growth. We now have clear objectives residents can use to measure. And measurement is key. While the economic news is positive, and we've added new companies to our community, like Ulta, Progressive, and we'll be welcoming the, the uh, Children's Hospital new $15 million facility later this year, we are mindful that many in our community still struggle with basic needs. President Franklin Roosevelt once said, the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. The City of Footerway has a long-standing commitment to helping our neighbors in need through our funding of human services programs. I'm proud to report that we have increased that commitment in our current budget, raising human services funding from just over 764000 to just over a million dollars in this year's budget. This includes our absolutely critical work to preserve King County Public Health Services for 13,700 low-income women and children for the next two years. We are committed as well to working with groups such as Sound Alliance, who are concerned about the growing challenges to homelessness in our city and our region. As a city, a city cannot truly build its future without addressing the needs of all of its citizens. On public safety, public safety remains our top priority, and we've made recent strides to strengthen police services. We've added five new officer positions in my first year in office, and I want to thank the City Council for their partnership in this effort. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of being able to measure success, and in 2014, we've made significant progress in being able to measure the extraordinary goals we set for ourselves in the community. We added the downtown police substation uh, across the street from the transit center, increasing the visibility and keeping residents and visitors safe as our downtown grows. 
through specially trained officers. Officers cited 1,093 drivers for cell phone use and texting while driving and took 34 DUI uh, drivers off the road. Through the new automated license plate readers, we have recovered over 50 stolen vehicles and arrested numerous criminals. The system scans over 4,300 plates per day. On addressing citizens' ideas and concerns, we brought neighborhood connection, the town hall meeting concepts, to six different neighborhoods across the city, speaking to more than 500 residents in the process. We've created a matrix to respond to the concerns raised there and to make sure that we've got citizen action requests to make sure that we are responsive and responding to the needs of our community. In regard to building a, a greater sense of community, we've introduced new community events like the movies in the park that make Town Square Park feel like Federal Way's living room. And we've brought together the people for special events, as, we, as we've mentioned, for the Town Square Park grand opening, Veterans Day dedication, and our special blue, that was the crowd right there, for the uh, Blue Friday. We had, uh, we estimated about, uh, uh, about 1,200 people. Um, I could not believe we had that many people in our parking lot. It was absolutely amazing. We've also added new programs to make sure we reach out to the citizens of this community, like New Day Federal Way. And I'd like to acknowledge Kathy Arndt, the face of New Day Federal Way. Thank you, Kathy, for your work. <laughs> for the first time in our city's history, we actually are, are bringing events that happen from Red, White, and Blues to MLK to all the, to the neighborhood connection meetings. People, all people have to do is turn on Channel 21 and see those events. And, in fact, we have a camera here today recording this, and this will play on Channel 21 uh, for probably the next year. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I guess it depends on how I do. <laughs> Federal residents enjoy a great parks and recreation system that provides with places to play sports and pursue fitness goals. We're working to build on that legacy with Town Square Park and many other projects. Our popular community center continues to reach peak membership levels, adding 25,000 more guests in 2014, an increased membership by 34% over the last two years. Those are astounding numbers. We offer special programs from youth to seniors, and we work to provide support to our disabled American veterans. Our budget invests $700,000 toward improvements at Lakota Park. Later this summer, we'll be, we'll, we will begin building the Panther Lake Trail near the Aquatic Center. We have a lot of work on our agenda, but I want to remind residents that we are pursuing these efforts in a fiscally sound manner. My first budget as your, as your mayor, the 2015-16 biennial budget, is the first structurally balanced city budget in more than a decade. You know, ladies and gentlemen, these are exciting times for Federal Way as we celebrate the first quarter century of our city's history. For the first time in a generation, we have tangible signs of positive growth in our city, and we're leaning forward working hard for a better tomorrow. Earlier I spoke of a special letter hanging in the back of our city council chambers. The author wrote that incorporating would, quote, enhance the welfare of our citizens. With the town, square, town center project, we've laid the foundation for downtown growth. With the economic development strategy, we have mapped out a strategic approach to developing our economy and recruiting and retaining businesses. With investments in our park, police department, human services, we can be sure that our community and quality of life grow with our downtown and our economy. And we are pursuing these goals on a, on a sustainable financial course. The author of that special letter checked in recently. He was proud to see how our city had prepared, had progressed over the past 25 years. He wrote, Barbara and I are checking in with our personal greetings and good wishes on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of incorporation of your great city Federal Way, Washington. Hard work, dedication to quality of life, and love of neighbor have all contributed to the success that Federal Way has enjoyed since its incorporation. The city leaders and citizens set high goals for this new city at the time of incorporation, and it's clear that those goals have been exceeded. Federal Way is a thriving community that has indeed enhanced the welfare of its citizens. Congratulations on this milestone event, and best wishes for continued success on the decades ahead. Sincerely, George H. W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States. I actually. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, my friends, the state of our city is stronger than ever before. In closing, I re I'm reminded what the populist William Jennings Bryan once said. Destiny is no matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. 
It is a thing to be achieved. Now is the time we choose our destiny. Now it is time for us to get to work. Thank you very much. That concludes the 2015 State of the City Address. To get the latest news from the mayor's office, follow Mayor Farrell on Twitter or visit the Mayor Jim Farrell Facebook page. There's a lot of excitement ahead for our city and you can be part of it right here on New Day Federal Way. I'm Kathy Arndt, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.